What is good? This is a new channel sports take down. As you know, this is a solo dolo. Back at it again with your host, Chris. So glad to be here today. Normally I give y'all an intro, but man, I'm going straight into this take down. The quarterback bubble is about to bust. <laughs> That's my takedown. The quarterback bubble is about to bust. Y'all remember the housing bubble in the year 2000? Maybe you don't. Maybe you're too young. (laughs) I'm assuming. Can't assume. In the early 2000s, people were buying houses like crazy. You get a house. You get a house. You remember the Oprah thing? You get a house. You can come with stanky credit. Thank you, credit. <laughs> Thank you, booty credit. And it did not matter. You could get a loan and get a house. And then the housing bubble crashed. And it crashed hard. And now, your credit needs to be A1. A1 credit to get a home. And that's what's going to happen to the quarterback market. You just got to be able to throw some passes. <laughs> You got to be able to complete some passes and look like a competent quarterback. And if you're able to do that, the market says, not only do you get paid, you get paid. You get paid a lot of money. A lot of money. Maybe the housing bubble uh, example didn't do it for you. What about GameStop? What about the GameStop stock? Y'all remember that shot up? We all knew it was part of a scheme. Shout out to the Wall Street Bets Reddit page. I'm on that page, by the way. <laughs> but you knew the stock was going up, but eventually it was going to come down because the stock price at what it was at one point is at the 300s was never worth that amount. We know GameStop is not worth that amount. Nobody goes to GameStop anymore. Do you still go to GameStop? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Leave in the comments, when's the last time you've gone into a GameStop and purchased a video game? I'd like to know, because I haven't done that in a long time. Well, it's the same thing going on with the, the quarterback market. It's the exact same thing. Before I mention this quarterback, I wanted to say I am never, ever against a human being that is doing a job and gets paid for doing that job. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If a company wants to pay you X amount of dollars, who am I to come and say, hey, why are you paying him that? (laughs) I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. But what I am is I'm a realist. So if I see that the market is incorrect, I'm going to point it out. If you didn't know, perhaps you've been tuned out to ESPN. Perhaps you haven't been checking the sports page in a week. (laughs) But Dak Prescott, just got paid a lot of money. A lot of money. You know what? Just got paid. Yeah. Friday night. That's how I felt for him. I felt so happy for Dak. Dak got paid. Congratulations, sir. He's been through so much. A horrific injury. Good players on his team getting suspended. Players on the offensive line getting injured. Head coach getting fired. A GM slash owner making wild comments about Black Lives Matter. Or at least about standing up or not standing up for the flag. An NFL that's embroiled trying to battle with Black Lives Matter. And as a face of the number one franchise, maybe in sports, at least in the United States, the Dallas Cowboys. And somehow, someway, Dak Prescott has handled all of that. All of those things, and probably the worst thing you can say about him is attending a a party during the COVID pandemic. That's probably the worst thing you can say about him as a cowboy. So he got paid, and I'm happy for him. But if you listen to my last takedown, (laughs) I talked about Dak Prescott and his contract situation, and I applauded the Cowboys for one thing, and that is they seem to understand the trend of the quarterback market. They weren't going to overpay for Dak Prescott. Well, they did. (laughs) They overpaid. They overpaid for Dak Prescott. And I'll tell you why. 
in year one is getting seventy five million dollars. That's good. I mean, that's a lot of money. He gets sixty six million guaranteed at signing. Do at signing. Right. Sixty six million dollars. It's like when you when you when you sign for your car and there's a certain amount due at signing. This is, this is different, though. You're you, Dak Prescott's not giving any money. They're paying him for signing. The best part of this, for me at least, the best part for me is that he signed this contract. He has a no trade clause. That's excellent. I think most NFL uh, stars should have this, if not all of them. You got to have this. And then the no franchise tag provision. That's a new one. Not every player has been doing that. It's been around, but I think now it's going to be prevalent, at least with the stars. So basically, by the time Dak Prescott hits age 31, he's going to be back at the table with an opportunity to negotiate his contract. He is a good guy, and I'm happy he got paid. (laughs) But, (laughs) but, (laughs) the Cowboys overpaid. Dak Prescott has one playoff win. One. One playoff win. No NFC Championship game appearances. Even though I really should got to one. Aaron Rodgers made one of the best passes in NFL history to deny them an opportunity to go to an NFC Championship game. But that's neither here nor there. He's never been to an NFC Championship game. But the Cowboys paid him like he's the best quarterback in the NFL. They paid him like he's the best quarterback in the NFL, but he hasn't even been to an NFC championship game. So obviously he hasn't been to a Super Bowl. But they paid him like he was one of the best in the game. So the question is, why did they do that? And the answer is simple. The quarterback market in the NFL is like a big fat bubble right now. It's just it's just floating in the air. You know it's about to bust, but everybody's trying to get in. <laughs> everybody's trying to get in this bubble because it is big, it is fat, it is lucrative, and a lot of people are getting paid. A lot of people are getting paid, at least in the quarterback position. So you look at the Cowboys and what they did. They, they paid a guy as the best, but he's not that. But I'm not mad he got paid, though. (laughs) Isn't there an irony there? I am not mad this brother got paid. But at the same time, I can recognize, I can see that he was overpaid. Ugh, that's tough. And the way I, I, if you're a Cowboy fan, let me tell you this. In Dak Prescott's first season with the Dallas Cowboys, they were excellent. Ezekiel Elliott was a rookie. The offensive line was coming together. And they didn't make it to the NFC Championship game. And my question for you as a Dallas Cowboy fan is this. Do you think you'll have a better season than Dak Prescott's rookie season with the Cowboys after he signed this contract? Because the difference is, when he was a rookie on a rookie deal, the money was spread around the team. Now, Dak Prescott has taken a much bigger percentage of the cap. And if you couldn't get to the Super Bowl when his cap number wasn't as large, what's the logic of thinking you're going to get to the Super Bowl when his cap number expands? I don't get it. (laughs) I just don't get it. But neither do the teams in the NFL. They don't get it either. Or maybe they don't care. I don't know what it is. Let me know in the comment section what you think. And while you're leaving a comment, please subscribe. We do this. For you, we do it for you. Subscribe, subscribe, hit that like button, whatever you got to do to help us out. We'll greatly, greatly appreciate it. Lamar Jackson had to see that. I'm convinced Lamar Jackson saw Dak Prescott's numbers and was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if I was Lamar Jackson, I would be standing and clapping. I'm so happy for you, Dak. I'm happy for you, my brother. He's happy because he's thinking, now, wait a minute. Dak Prescott has one playoff win, and so do I. Dak Prescott has had good seasons in the NFL, and so do I. Dak Prescott doesn't have an MVP, but I do. Ravens. I remember y'all paid Joe Flacco. (laughs) I know Joe Flacco won an MVP, and I talked about that in my last takedown, and I'm going to leave a link to that takedown in the description. Go back to listen to that. Go back and listen to that takedown. And really all the takedowns that we have. That's another shameless plug, y'all. 
But Lamar Jackson has to see this contract and be ecstatic. Him and his agent must be dancing and clapping. If Dak just got paid Friday night, uh, Lamar Jackson's about to make it rain. <laughs> I'm about to make it rain. Because he is going to want more money than Dak Prescott. And he has a valid argument. I've been an MVP of the NFL. I, Lamar Jackson, am an MVP. <laughs> That's all his agent needs to do. Yeah, my client was an MVP. I know you saw Dak's numbers. He's making about $40 million. We'll take about $43. Uh, we'll take a little more guaranteed. Of course, we'll do the no trade clause. We'll do the no tag, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. I actually think it's okay. If you want to pay Lamar Jackson, eh. You haven't been to a Super Bowl on this rookie deal. What makes you think you're going to go to a Super Bowl when it takes a bigger percentage of the cap? But that's my last takedown. The quarterback position is overvalued. Whatever. Go back and listen to that. But the real problem is this. As the numbers grow, that bubble just gets long, larger and larger until it busts. You remember Jamarcus Russell, don't you? You remember him? You see... The NFL collective bargaining agreement about 15, 15 plus years ago was quite foolish. It was where the rookie players were getting paid more than the veterans. So you had rookies like an Eli Manning coming to the NFL making an absurd amount of money as a rookie. But you also had a guy like Jamarcus Russell <laughs> who got paid an insane amount of guaranteed money to do absolutely nothing. Nada. Zero. He did nothing. And he made out like a bandit. And that's when that bubble burst. They say, yeah, yeah, we need, we, need to, we need to renegotiate this. This is not going to happen again. And guess what happened? In the new CBA, rookie's pay scale went down. It went down. And when I think about this bubble burst, I'm going to pick on a guy I picked on before, Josh Allen. I'm sorry, Josh. He, I mean, he's a good guy. You know, I've heard him talk, and he sounds nice, and I'm sure he's a good guy. But he's another person who saw Dak Prescott's pay and thought to himself, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this. Because <laughs> I myself, just like Dak, I, I, I've also won a playoff game. I've won a playoff game. Heck, I've won two. I've won two playoff games, and I beat Lamar Jackson, the MVP of the NFL. So after Lamar gets paid, I should get paid more than both of those guys. You see that bubble getting bigger? <laughs> it's getting bigger, ain't it? Now it's getting uncomfortable when I say Josh Allen. Some people are like, ooh, ooh, Josh getting that much money? Ooh, that bubble's starting to get real uncomfortable. It's starting to get real uncomfortable. And then you have a guy following him, maybe like a Baker Mayfield. What if he has a good season next season and he wins, I don't know, a couple playoff games? He's going to say, I want Dak Prescott money. <laughs> you see how absurd this is getting? It's getting absurd. And then it's going to pop. Just like it did with Jamarcus Russell. I'm, I don't know the quarterback who's going to pop with. Could it be Josh Allen? Maybe. Could it be Dak Prescott? Maybe. Could it be Lamar Jackson? Maybe. Could it be Baker Mayfield? <laughs> if it gets to Baker, that's what I'm going to say. Likely. Likely. When it gets to Baker Mayfield, likely it pops with him. Because at some point, these NFL franchises, come on. Are they really going to take up this much cap space? So you may be listening and you say, Chris, are you trying to take money out of people's pockets? No, that's not what I'm trying to do. Not at all. Not at all. What I'm really saying is, is that the NFL has a quarterback problem. The NFL has a quarterback problem, and quite frankly, it hurts all the other players in the NFL because they're not getting paid what they should be getting paid. If anything, I'm trying to put money in more players' pockets. I'm player-friendly here. <laughs> We're player-friendly here at New Channel Sports. <laughs> and the QB problem is not just with quarterbacks playing today. It's also seeping into the Hall of Fame. Think about it like this. There are two quarterbacks who have recently retired in Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers. Whether you like it or not, they're both going to the Hall of Fame. At some point, they are going to get in the Hall of Fame. You know about Eli Manning. Well, maybe you don't. Let me tell you a little bit about Eli Manning. Of course, he has two Super Bowls. And if you listen to me at any point, I always talk about Eli Manning being one of the luckiest human beings I know. And maybe calling him lucky, eh, maybe that's a little unfair. Just saying he's only lucky. Because he's not only lucky, he's had some big time throws and they had a luck aspect to it, but he was never an elite quarterback. 
He was never an elite quarterback. You want to know his record, win-loss record in the NFL? You want to know? I'll tell you. You ready for this? (laughs) You're not ready. I don't think you're ready. And for the people who know, you know what I'm about to say. His career record, wins and losses. You ready? 116 wins, 115 losses. If he just played one more game, which he probably would have lost, be real with you, he would have been a 500 quarterback. He's barely a little bit over 500, but he's going into the Hall of Fame. The question is, I think about the Hall of Fame as players going in who had some dominant stretches in their careers where you thought they were at least a top three, top five player at their position. Was there ever any point where you thought, watching Eli Manning, that he was a top five quarterback in the NFL? If you say yes, oh, I know you lying. You lying. I know you lying. There's no way you did. There's no way. I understand he's won two Super Bowls. I understand he beat Tom Brady, the GOAT, in two Super Bowls. But you never thought he was better than Tom Brady. Duh. And you never thought he was a top five quarterback. Duh. But he's going to the Hall of Fame. Hmm? <laughs> That's how you really should feel. Hmm? What about Phillip Rivers? Phillip Rivers is an excellent quarterback. Had some elite seasons. But did you ever think Phillip Rivers was a top three quarterback in the NFL? Did you? Because he played in the same time period as Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Was there any point you thought he was better than any of those quarterbacks? I'll save you the head scratch. You know, you didn't. (laughs) There was never a point where you thought Philip Rivers was better than those three quarterbacks. I know you didn't. There's no way you did. Now, did Philip Rivers have a good career? Yes. But was there ever a point where you thought he is elite, the best of the best, the best to do it? No. No. The difference is these quarterbacks are playing a little longer, so their numbers are a little more bloated. This is a passing league, so their numbers are higher. And I think the Hall of Fame may have a problem. If we continue at this rate, where this bubble keeps growing and growing and growing, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a situation where the Hall of Fame becomes the quarterback Hall of Fame. Where if you're a decent quarterback, you're going to get in. I think about a player like an Andre Johnson, right? In his career. For the most part in his career, you thought he was at least a top three wide receiver in the NFL. You think of Calvin Johnson. You think of Larry Fitzgerald. You think of Andre Johnson. Those three guys were dominant in their periods. We know Calvin just got in. You know Larry's going to get in, but Andre may not. But as far as dominance in his position, the dominance in his position, there's no way you can argue that Eli Manning or Phillip Rivers were more dominant in their position than Andre Johnson. However, Eli and Phillip are shoo-ins to get in, and Andre may never get in. And this promise is also seeped in into college football. We rarely talk about college football. <laughs> we, we, we don't talk about it often, but I love college football. But it's seeped into college football as well. Think about the Heisman Trophy. The Heisman Trophy is essentially turned into the best quarterback in the nation trophy. But that's not the purpose of the Heisman Trophy. In fact, the person striking a pose is not even a quarterback. Or maybe he was. I mean, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but the point is, for the last 20 Heisman Trophy winners, maybe let's, let's go 21, since the year 2000, Since the year 2000, there have been four players to win a Heisman Trophy who are not quarterbacks. That stat alone should tell you how big this bubble is with quarterback position. It's just real bloated right now. There's only been four non-quarterbacks since the year 2000 to win the Heisman Trophy. I'll tell you who they are. One was Reggie Bush and his was vacated. And that's one of those when I'm I'm a Texas fan, so I thought Benzie Young should have got it anyway. But that one's vacated. They should give it back to him, though. That's, some, that's, that's a whole other takedown. But he should have his Heisman Trophy. The other one is Mark Ingram, University of Alabama. The other one is Derrick Henry, University of Alabama. And the other one is Devontae Smith, University of Alabama. You see a trend there? Alabama's been so good in college football that their best player sometimes just wins it. Because sometimes a quarterback is not great. So we'll just give it to the best player in Alabama. <laughs> so if you're not from Alabama... 
and you're not named Reggie Bush, you better be a quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. You better be a quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. It's the only way it works. This bubble has gone out of control. So for you Cowboys fans, I don't want you to say, so you're saying Dak Prescott is overpaid and he shouldn't be paid? Are you trying to take money away from a black man's pocket? <laughs> That's my Cowboy fan. What do you want to do? Why are you going to do that? This is always complaining, man. Always complaining. No, I'm not trying to take money out of anybody's pocket. I'm really trying to put money in other players' pockets. But more importantly, I just don't want to see this bubble burst. It's become a problem. And the solution is properly valuing the quarterback position. Because at this rate, that bubble is going to burst. And when it does, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be real nasty. Thank you so much for listening to the new channel Sports Take Down. Really appreciate it. Please subscribe. Please. We put this together. We take our time and our effort to put together some good takedowns for you. We do it for you. Please subscribe. Hit that like button. Smash the notification bell. If you want to check out our other content, new channel sports that dot net. That's new spelled in you channel sports, not dot com dot net. You can find some articles that I've written on there. Some excellent articles. The last one I wrote was on JJ Watt and what he means to the city of Houston. You can check out our podcast there. We have well over a hundred episodes and we're going strong and you can listen to our podcast anywhere. You listen to your podcast, Podbean, Stitcher, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast, we are there. And if you want to see our beautiful faces, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You can. We are on Afro vibes to V. You can check out Apple Vibes TV on your Roku app, or you can download it on your Android or your iPhone. We're there every week for a live show. Y'all know how I end this. Stay safe, y'all. Please stay safe. Until next time. Peace.